Hello out there in machine shop land, this is Tubal Cain again coming to you from central Illinois where the corn grows high and uh, the corn crop is pretty much in and it was a bountiful crop this year today I'm going to give you a little demonstration or a lesson on holes and how to accurately locate holes in your work and I mean within a thousandth or two and uh, uh, accurately sized and accurately placed holes when you think about it, about 75% of all the work that we do in a shop is hole forming of some way, some form uh, or another. And uh, often the holes are not in the place where we want them, or not exactly in the place, depending on what the job is. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you're making a bracket to hang on the side of the garage, it isn't that critical. But I'm going to show you three different methods of uh, doing that. Before I go on, uh, here's two interesting websites uh, on YouTube, uh, and you can just uh, do a search at the top of YouTube for uh, Shop Dog Sam, and he's got some really interesting uh, videos on old engines and machine shop and so on, but the guy is a particularly interesting character, and you'll enjoy listening to him and, and watching him. Uh, I'm sure you will. And then another man emailed me recently and do a search for 08 Maxwell 1 and he built a really neat erector set, uh, just a fabulous uh, a contraption. And take a look at that just for the fun of it and show that to your kids or your grandkids. We got to try and get children and young people interested in the trade and working in a shop. But here's the methods that I'm uh, planning on showing you here today. Uh, one, locating the holes uh, with a digital readout. Well, anybody can do that. Uh, your wife can do it. My wife can do it. My dog could do it if I had a dog. But we'll do that anyway, and it's super accurate. And then the other method here that I want to really want to show you is how to use the height gauge and uh, locate the holes accurately. But and I'll call this the prick punch method. And thirdly, we'll use the height gauge again and we'll use the optical center punch and uh, we'll get her as close as we can with that and what we're after here is uh, drilling the holes accurately where we want them to be and then I will drive dowel pins in there, hardened dowel pins and we will put a uh, caliper across those and see just how accurately are we are, that is we're going to inspect the work so let's get started here with uh, the digital readout. I'm on the Bridgeport Mill now and I'm going to drill three holes in a row. It doesn't matter what the location is in regards to uh, the Y axis here, but we'll accurately locate them on the X axis and they're going to be three quarters of an inch apart. That is 750 thousandths apart and I'm going to do that using the uh, digital readout here and we're only interested in the x-axis so I'm going to zero that out and using a center drill now I'm going to drill three holes three quarters apart the table and moving at 750 thousandths. I'm looking at the Accurite right now. And here we go, we're on 750. I'm locking the table and I'm drilling, center drilling, the next one. Won't break those center drills off. My work is set up uh, on parallels. Alright, now I'm going to move it down another 750. That'll be 100, uh, 1 inch, 500 thousandths. Or you can zero it out. And I'll just go 1.500. I lock the table. And I'm ready to center drill the next one.
this is a set of stubby bits I particularly like. So now I'm going to uh, re-drill using uh, 1564 because we're going to ream them quarter inch. And I'm just going to back, uh, I'm going to drill the hole that I'm on and move it back for the other two. And I don't think I need to show you that. I drilled two holes already, one, two, and I'm back to the first hole, which my digital readout's on uh, zero, and I'm going to drill that hole. I guess I forgot to tell you why I was using the stubby bits, but uh, you don't have to drop the table way down uh, to put a long bit in there. That's why I like the stubby bits for some applications. I did remove one of the parallels, so I won't drill into it. This is hot roll steel, by the way, 3 8 thick, 2 inches wide. And the only reason I'm using it is because I have a lot of it and I got it free, and this is going to be waste stock. So I'm all the way through now, and it's ready to ream. And I'm going to do that on the drill press. You could do it on the milling machine, but there's no need. Uh, I'm going to do it on the drill press. It's faster and the holes won't move now because they are established. Now the only reason I don't want to do it on the mill is because the chucking reamers are so doggone long that you got to drop your table way, way down and that's quite an inconvenience. So I'll see you at the drill press presently. My shop is so crowded it's really hard to set the camera up where I'm not in the way but uh, it's important now do not use a drill press vise. We want the work to float and find its true center under the reamer. It's a quarter inch reamer. I drilled 1 64th under. I already put some holes, some oil in the, the holes. And I removed the burrs from the back side so it sits flat on the table, not at an angle. Make sure that your table is clean with no chips. And we're ready to ream them. Okay, that one's done, and we are going to check it uh, in a little while, but we're going to assume that it's pretty darn accurate, because we did not do any layout. The uh, milling machine and the Accurite digital readout did the layout. I didn't even put a center line on there. Alright, now for the next one. Now this is my little granite surface plate that is a perfectly flat and true surface. They make iron ones as well. You need to do this on a surface that's perfect. Your bench top probably isn't good enough. I have an angle plate there. And uh, that's my 12 inch Mitutoyu height gauge with a carbide scriber on it. And this height gauge uh, measures the distance off of the flat surface. Any distance you want up to 6 inches. Now they make these in digital and verniers but I like this kind and it reads exactly the way your regular uh, dial caliper reads. And I'm going to draw a center line on this one inch in and then I'm going to lay off three holes. The first one will be uh, one inch up and then three quarters from that and then three quarters from that. I will do a second piece that is uh, blue in color off camera and that's the one we'll use for the optical center punch so that's done at the same time without resetting the uh, uh, the height gauge all the time. Do not confuse this with a surface gauge, this is a height gauge. So here we go. I'm going to set it for one inch and always lock it it's on one inch and this is my center line now I'm not just marking this I am scribing it, I am cutting it with a carbide, I am 
going over and over because I, I want this to be a groove and you'll see why momentarily. Now this has been squared off that's why we got the little mark on there and here's my first hole again I'm scribing it very vigorously now I will raise this up uh, three quarters and then another three quarters I'll do that off camera so that we have three holes that have been laid out 